Welcome once again to Faith Fellowship Baptist Church and our devotional series on the book of Psalms takes us again to Psalm 40 today for part two of a song of the obedient servant of the Lord. Uh, in the second Psalm, uh, or the first Psalm, we have uh, verses one through 11, the thanksgiving and the praise that David gives to God for all the deliverances and the goodness that he has experienced from the Lord. And then the second part of the Psalm, verses 12 through 17, we have a prayer from David for a current situation and principles for a future deliverance that he is requesting. So it's a song, as I mentioned, of the obedient servant. And, and David takes a look in verses 6 through 8 today. Because of God's deliverances and because of his wonderful acts of salvation, David shares, us, shares with us a proper response that we should have to the Lord and the need that we have for a personal commitment or dedication to the Lord. Let me read verses 6 through 8. In sacrifice and offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required, then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Well, the first stanza of the hymn, again, is a song of gratitude towards the Lord. And this praise, though, now leads us into the dedication of David to, of himself to the Lord. And this is really what God desires and designs for his own people. He saves us and delivers us with the purpose of us responding properly to all that he gives us. It's the obedience from a, 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 a religious person, you could say, is one thing. But the heart that is dedicated to the Lord and a heart that is committed to obedience is the true sign of a righteous person. In sacrifice and offering, verse 6, David again says, you have not delighted. Well, in the Old Testament, people wanted, when they wanted to praise the Lord, they brought a sacrifice or a peace offering to the tabernacle or to the temple. And that offering came with a song of praise. Uh, such a peace offering or accompanying sacrifice acknowledged the thankful worshippers' heart response to God's goodness in their lives. David praised the Lord in 1 Chronicles 29, verses 13 and 14 by saying, O oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. And then David says, But who am I? And who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. But that was the proper response of praise for the goodness and mercies of God. David was overwhelmed by God's gracious goodness, so he spoke in praise. So when David and the people of Israel give a peace offering to the Lord or thanksgiving, it's the proper response, and it's part of a, what they call a vow of dedication. And Psalm 40 in these verses is such a vow. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to have to. <clears throat> so when David and the people of Israel give a peace offering to the Lord, they do so because of their gratitude for God's provisions. And the delight in the sacrifices of the Lord from his perspective comes not in the ritual itself, nor the animals or meal offerings he receives, but the Lord delights in what the sacrifices and the offerings represent in the hearts of those who come before the Lord. And according to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 through 10, it's Jesus that gives us the fulfillment of that perfect life of dedication. Well, three quick principles. What does the Bible tell us about a life of dedication? Well, first of all, God is pleased when believers dedicate themselves to his service. The first point is from a both positive and negative perspective. What did God not want? Well, God didn't want just the sacrifice. He never did. But what did he want? Well, he wanted the heart that came along with the sacrifice. Empty ritual meant nothing, just like Jesus said to us about our prayers in Matthew chapter 6. Endless words or repetitions, the point of going through the motion, why bother if the heart is not involved? God's desire is that the outward ritual would be an or the ritual would be an outward expression of an inner faith. A sin offering, or for that matter, any offering or service that we give to the Lord, uh, without genuine words of, of a heart of thanks and commitments, is worthless. Today, the same truth applies for us. God is interested uh, in the worshiper, not just giving a gift or an offering. God doesn't need the animals. Psalm 24 says he owns all things anyway. But God is eager to see, as Psalm 50 verse 17 says, the brokenness and the contrite in heart as we humble ourselves before the giver of all good things. So God is pleased when believers dedicate themselves to his service. Secondly, God is pleased when believers recognize that every person is prepared for service. 
In sacrifice and offering, verse 6 again, David says, You've given me an open ear, burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Ears you have dug for me. That's the literal thing. And, and what it's referring to here is that if God has your ears, he has your attention. He has all of you. It can mean the whole person is listening. So the psalmist is basically saying, I'm all ears to hear what God is saying to me, and I long to respond. By extension, then, the truth is the same for us. And Paul says in Romans 6, 11 through 13, we are to use our instruments, our parts of our body, all that we have, our eyes, ears, and mouth, and nose, and feet, all for his service, for instruments of righteousness, not unrighteousness. And all of us have been created, bought with a price. Therefore, we're able to glorify God, or we should be able to glorify God in our bodies. That's his desire, and it should be our desire as well. So thirdly, God is pleased also when believers accept the dedication, or excuse me, believers accept the directions for their service that God has provided. Verse 7 talks about the, the scroll of the book. It's written about me or the law of God being within our hearts. Well, that would refer to the Old Testament, and for those of us today, it would, be, it would refer to all of Scripture. God's Word is written for you and me to obey. It's not just for our intellect, it's for our heart. It's to change us so that we might become more like His Son, Jesus Christ. All Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable, useful to teach us what is true. It makes us realize what is wrong. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us what to do right. Why? Because God is using it, uh, verse 17, to equip His people for every good work. Alan Ross writes, the entire life of Jesus was lived in obedience to the word, but it was also the fulfillment of prophecy, and in the final analysis, he accomplished what the Father had set for him to do. He had given him a body, and through that body, God or Jesus accomplished all that the Father wanted him to accomplish. Mark 10, 45, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So as it was for David, so, is it, so it is for us today. God has informed us through his word, what he approves of, and what he has appointed for us to do. So God is pleased when believers dedicate themselves to his service, to know the word, but also to commit ourselves to that word, to do it. God is pleased when believers recognize that every person is prepared for service and that we've all been bought with a price and we need to respond with a life of dedication for him. And God is pleased when believers accept the directions that he has given to us in his word. It's not about coming up with our own plan. It's about following God's will for our lives. And it should be our heart's desire and our heart's determination and delight to do the will of God. Remember, Psalm 40 verse 8 says, I will take joy in doing your will, my God, <clears throat> for your instructions are written on my heart.